In this video, I'd like to look at an R script that is going to fit some data to a logistic growth model. So just to be clear, we're going to be doing some regression to a logistic growth model, but we are not going to be doing logistic regression. So the logistic goes with the model, not with the regression. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, the first code here is that we're going to have the open XLSX uh, library. And if you don't have this installed, then when it sees, when RStudio sees this code, it's going to pop a little message up here saying it needs to be installed. Um, I already have it installed. So we're going to uh, announce that we're using that library and then I'm um, using the read XLSX uh, method and giving it a, a URL to the Excel file, and the data is on the, the first sheet. And it's it's one base, not zero base. So this is the, the first sheet. And that data is uh, the deaths and AIDS in the in the 1980s. Um, and so, and we're going to fit that data to a logistic function. So it's going to sort of start slowly, accelerate, and then um, and then sort of stop, you know, accelerating uh, quite as much. Um, and so uh, that a function with that kind of behavior is going to be sort of an S shape, and uh, one of the standard models with that sort of behavior is a logistic function. And I'm going to use the version. There is You can have the parameters in the logistic function sort of float around and, and appear differently. I'm going to use the version of the logistic function that uh, is found on uh, Wikipedia. And so this version of the logistic function what I like is uh, about this version is it's sort of easy to figure out what the parameters are. L is what I'm saturating up to, what I'm going to, the maximum. Um, X is this sort of midway point. If X is equal, if sorry, X zero, if the variable X is equal to the parameter X zero, then it's the exponential of zero, which is one. And so that will get the halfway value. So, and it's also the inflection point. So it's about sort of when we get to half of the maximum, but it's also the inflection point of the data where the where the maximum uh, change is occurring, the maximum uh, slope. And uh, K determines something about how fast it goes up. And then it's possible also to have them come down and then K would be negative. Okay, so that's the model we're going to fit to. And uh, we need to know in this, those are not, um, those parameters are not uh, linear parameters. So that we need the, the NLS, the nonlinear least squares method or, or at least we can't use just a, a linear model. The, the parameters are nonlinear parameters. And in the NLS method, we need to give it a head start. So we need to sort of have some understanding of what these values are so we can give it a decent head start. Okay. But we said use the open uh, XLSX library and to read in the data. And then I like to sort of simplify the names. Uh, so I'm renaming the data with this names method. So there, I don't have a lot of data. I have it from starting this. These are the years, the number of years since 1980. So two corresponds to 1982. And it goes up to 12, so uh, 1992. Um, and then this is, the deaths in thousands. So um, the one five here for 1983, that was uh, 1500 or uh, so multiply by 
multiply by a thousand, so one point five thousand. Okay. Um, all right. Now let's uh, plot that. Um, I just say AIDS deaths. I should probably say thousands of AIDS deaths or something, but here we go. There we there we have the plot, and you can see this sort of basic S shape that is uh, corresponds to the logistic, a sort of a small slope, a faster slope, a smaller slope. Those are characteristics of a logistic. Here's where we're using the NLS method. So here is the data. The AIDS data is what I read from Excel, and that was a data frame. So that, that library reading the Excel in that library produces a data frame. So I have the data frame, and then I use the Ys and Xs in the data frame. So, and I renamed them, if you recall, year and deaths. So the Y deaths uh, as a function of uh, year. And then here's my uh, logistic function, my logistic growth model function. The L, the parameter L divided by one plus the exponential of minus K, the growth rate uh, times the variable year minus the uh, this sort of midpoint value uh, parameter. So three parameters, L, K, and X0, and there's the function. And then the third argument in the NLS is a vector uh, which specifies my sort of starting points. So... The L is sort of what I go up to. So I had a quick look at the graph and said, okay, 40. Um, X0 was this sort of where it's increasing the most. Then I had a quick guess and said eight. And then with K, I never do too much of a guess other than just positive. So it's going up, so it's positive. So I just said one. And then I also got a summary of the fit. So run that. And let's have a peek here. My guess of 40 was pretty good. It's coming out to be 41. Uh, I guessed eight is coming to down to seven. And then the K is what I really don't have a good guess on. That's So it's really helping me the most on giving me a good K. And then I want to just write some code to... So this model is a whole big monster of things, how many iterations and all, you know, all sorts of things, uh, I want to extract from it these fitting parameters. So that's this code from 37 to 39. Uh, I called it my fit, the result of NLS, I called my fit. It has some component M, and then M has some uh, method, get pars, and then that produces uh, a vector or, or an associative array, I'll call it. Um, and then these are the, the keys. So it's sort of like a key value pair. So I'm extracting here are the keys and I will get the corresponding values for those keys. And so there are those values sort of specified now as variables K, L, and X0. And then I can uh, use curve to plot this function with the L and the K and the X0. Curve likes the variable to be called x, so I switched it from year up here. It was referred to as year because that's what it is in the data. Down here in curve, it usually likes to be called x, but I and I used the the variables that as they appear, like on that Wikipedia page, L, X0, and K uh, for all the parameters, and we have values for those. And the from let's go to two and go to 12. I could probably extract these values from the x's of the data, but um, the minimum x of the data, the maximum x of the data, but I just sort of hard-coded it in 2 and 12. I'm making it red. I'm adding it to what I already have and making it a little bit thick. So there's my thick red curve. Okay. 
I want to display the equation. Sometimes I'll just display the parameter. Sometimes I'll display the equation. This time I just decided to display the equation. But I always like to see the result of my fit on the plot. A lot of times it, uh, people don't give that to you, but you know I don't think there's sense in getting a model unless you're telling telling your viewer also what the what the model parameters are. So I created the equation just with the the L and the K and the X zero sort of put in as numbers. Um, and then finally, this text adds it to the graph. I'm putting it at an X of five. This is the X and the Y are sort of the middle. So I'm putting it at like five and 35. So up here near the top. And I made it blue for whatever reason. So there is uh, the end of our code. So we have used the open XLSX library to read some, an Excel file. It had uh, AIDS deaths. Uh, we did some renaming. We did some plotting. We did a nonlinear fit to the logistic growth model. We got the uh, parameters from that. We fit it and we displayed the equation with the fit parameters uh, inserted. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you with this one. Thanks for your attention.